Joining me now is John Gizzi. He's Newsmax's chief political columnist and White House correspondent. John, great to see you. Thanks for being Happy here. New Year. Happy New Year to you. Uh, we have a peculiar circumstance. We have an administration in its twilight days, less than a month left, deciding it is going to take, undertake a couple of major policy initiatives, one of which has caused a great deal of controversy and a huge stir, has to do with Israel. We step back from the U.N. vote on political settlements in the, in the West Bank. We didn't veto it, as we would normally do. And uh, the words have been flying back and forth between Netanyahu, between the Obama administration, between John Kerry, between President-elect Trump. John, in my memory, I don't recall an administration, uh, if you will, flipping the finger like this on the way out of the door. This is a huge, important ally of ours. What are we doing here? Well, and it comes at a time when uh, Russia and Turkey and Iran are on the verge of a summit in Moscow to decide what happens in Syria after Aleppo and what happens to their long-standing client Bashar Assad. The United States is nowhere involved. Instead of playing a pivotal role in the Middle East that it ought to be playing, it is in a fight with its ally. Uh, it's odd that for years, press secretaries uh, of the Obama administration would say um, Bashar al-Assad is on the wrong side of history and will go down as one of the bloodiest dictators. Fine, but they're not determining how he will go or whether he will go. They're fighting with the uh, one that uh, President Obama re repeatedly referred to as our closest friend in the Middle East. Uh, there is no precedent for it. I will say that if you want to go back to 20 years ago, mm -hmm. a quarter century ago to be exact, uh, the lowest ebb of U.S.-Israeli relations were when George H.W. Bush was in his final year and Yitzhak Shamir was prime minister of Israel. What was the issue? You guessed it. Settlements in the Palestinian right. territory. Well, it's, it's not even... What I find strange about this, John, is it's, it's not even that we would have a disagreement with our, our friend and our ally, Israel. Uh, it's that we've made it such a public and messy uh, relationship here right at the end of, for, the, for the Obama administration. That's what's peculiar. It sort of highlights, in a way, the mess that you just talked about, which is our whole foreign policy in particular as it relates to the Middle East. Exactly. And another thing, the language that Secretary Kerry used, for America's top diplomat, he wasn't too diplomatic, using terms such as the Palestinian territory is carved up as if it were Swiss cheese, and then saying Israel can be a Jewish state or a democracy, but it can't be both. Strong medicine, all right, and strong words to use with a friend that the United States has been with from the start in 1947. I will point out one more thing. Uh, the side to this is that it has created a tense, turbulent almost, relationship between the president-elect and the lame duck president. Uh, what was proceeding as a smooth transition between Barack Obama and Donald Trump has now grown very incendiary to a point that I would say uh, it is akin to that between President-elect Franklin Roosevelt in 1933 and outgoing President Herbert Hoover when they publicly jousted over the World Economic Conference. And Trump didn't even defeat Obama in the election. It's, it's, it's weird to me, John, because it's like this administration is poisoning the well as it leaves town. Uh, there's, there's the U.S.-Israel situation, there's the U.S.-Russia situation, and, 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 and I can understand uh, why President-elect Trump would feel as if he is being, if the forest is being cut down and trees laid in his path on, on the way to the White House. I, I has, it, you, you mentioned FDR and Herbert Hoover. That's been a long time <laughs> since we engaged in such an antagonistic relationship. Uh, uh, so I guess we could, at least in contemporary times, call this pretty unprecedented. What, what are you hearing down there about why they're doing this? 
Uh, again, this is a big mystery, and it is compounded, Bill, by the fact that virtually everyone is out of town. The president is in Hawaii, of course. Uh, he paid his respects at Pearl Harbor with Prime Minister Abe. Uh, President-elect Trump is in New York and was at Miralago in Florida for Christmas. Um, I would have to say that stay tuned until next week. The president will return to town. The press briefings will return at the White House. And I would say respectfully to my friend, Press Secretary Josh Ernst, uh, that fellow has some splaining to do. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to be him coming back after this holiday season, as a matter of fact. It is interesting, however, because Ron Derma, the Israeli ambassador to the United yes. States, has basically said over the last couple of days, hey, there really, there really is nothing new in any of this. We, we, we've known this side, this part of President Obama since the day he took office. Um, you know, he, he has been, yes, he has been a good friend to Israel in the, in, in the cooperating sense of military and working with him in Israeli intelligence. But he said a lot of that has been undone by the Iran deal. The Iran deal poses the single greatest threat to Israeli security maybe ever in, in the region. Um, what are you hearing from the people down in Washington, are they, are, they, are, they, are they shocked by this sudden naked display of, of I, I don't know how to say it, but, but I, I, what has apparently been a raw relationship? Well, let me put it this way. Uh, there is no secret that uh, President Obama and Prime Minister Netanyahu hold each other in minimum high regard, to use a phrase of the late Speaker of the House, John McCormick. Um, both wished that the other would not be there by 2016. Uh, President Obama very clearly hoping for a victory in 2015 by the Zion First opposition party. And instead, of course, Prime Minister Netanyahu's Likud party went on to win an unprecedented fourth mandate. And uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu made no secret he wanted his old friend Mitt Romney to be elected president in 2012. Uh, it was not to be. Uh, so you have the tension escalating in this, shall we say, uncomfortable entente. Now, that said, there will be a new president coming in who has made it very clear that he's an Israel yeah. first. Uh, I think the choice of David Friedman as ambassador to Israel is his way of saying, I'm with you. Uh, the only problem, of course, is that the Knesset, the Israeli parliament, is always very uncertain, and a Netanyahu government could fall. Uh, it will be interesting to see with the relationship between the 45th president and the man considered Netanyahu's successor, Zaire Lapid, the leader of the largest opposition bloc in the Knesset. Oh, yeah, no, there, there's no doubt a, a change of coming in. Uh, as you mentioned, President Trump, President elect Trump coming in uh, has said, just stand by, wait till Jan 20. Uh, we will be there with you. I am curious, though, because when you think of Jewish voters in the United States, uh, uh -huh. and, and you, you do think of the Democratic Party, and I, right. I, I, I think there must be a very large sense of betrayal. Uh, in this latest action by, by the Obama administration, or am I wrong on that? Let me hold off on that, and I'll tell you why. Uh, going back to when Democratic administrations have had their disagreements with the government in Tel Aviv, I always thought the same thing as you, Bill, that there would be a schism and estrangement between mm -hmm. them and Republicans have gained. But as Rocky the Flying Squirrel used to say, that never works. Uh, Jimmy Carter and Menachem Begin, for example, had a rocky relationship, and yet Carter carried the Democratic vote against um, Ronald Reagan. Uh, if you go back even further, Richard Nixon saved Israel when he yeah. put U.S. forces on red alert in 1973. Golda Meir hailed him. And even the time before when his friendship and loyalty to Israel was known. He didn't come anywhere near the Democratic candidate. 
in getting the Jewish vote in the United States. It's really hard to undo the fact that it was a Democratic president, Harry Truman, who recognized Israel, even mm -hmm. though the National Republican platform had a call for a Jewish state in 1944, four years before the Democrats did. Fascinating. Well, we'll let you hold off on that for a little bit. Thanks, John. John Gizzi, Newsmax's chief political correspondent down in Washington, D.C., keeping an eye on the White House for us. And up next, Peter Morisi will be here to discuss what the 2017 economy will look like. We've got jobs announcements from President-elect Trump. It appears good times are on the horizon, but are they really? Keep it right here. We'll ask Peter next.